everyone, welcome back to Winging It. We're in week four of our February panel and we're going to try and finish this off today. And if you're new here, I will put a playlist at the top of the screen up there just so that you can catch up with what we're doing. So in Winging It 2024, we are going to make a panel each month over the Sundays in the month and in January we made a watery landscape I made a watery landscape but the idea was to make a landscape that reflected January wherever in the world you lived and for February we're taking the theme of fragments and we are putting together a panel that is built up of fragments basically so in week one we made this slow stitch woven section here made out of fragments of fabric and then in week two we added a little drops of hope panel so this was fragments of spring and we've just put a little feature panel there where we did a little bit of silk shading or thread painting and then last week we made a fragment snowdrop made out of tiny little pieces of fabric that we appliqued on using some bondweb or heat and seal and then we over stitched it to create a little bit of a stitch sampler of stitches that we can use when we're creating slow stitch pieces so if you remember the idea of fragments I talked about in week one came from Frank Skinner's poetry podcast would you believe and I will put a link to it again in the description below I did do that on week one but I'll add it again down below this video um, he did a podcast about the poet Sappho and Sappho was around maybe 600 years BCE and we don't really have any complete pieces of her poetry we've got little fragments of it and that idea really stayed with me and I kind of ruminated on it for a couple of weeks before I started filming this February panel and so I thought we could come full circle and come back to where we began and I've been spending a lot of time over the last few weeks just reflecting and thinking and reading quite a lot of poetry as it happens and particularly a couple of poets in particular Mary Oliver if you haven't discovered Mary Oliver please go and discover her she is totally accessible and her work is just beautiful and has really spoken to me over the last few weeks and so Mary Oliver was one I've also been looking at some Emily Dickinson and lots of other poets and I thought I'd share with you some of my favourites. So I thought we could start with Sappho. I've just printed these off and I'm just going to bring them onto the screen. So these are fragments from Sappho that I just think out of context have a sort of mystery to them if you're not into poetry do give it a chance everybody thinks that poetry is really obscure and if you've been around for a while you'll know that I am an English teacher poetry is one of my great loves literature is one of my great loves sewing is one of my great loves and I wanted to bring them all together in this piece so let's have a look I'm not going to read them all we'll be here all day but um this one in particular really stood out to me so this I have no idea what poem this came from this is just a piece of poetry a couple of lines of Sappho's work that somebody has found somewhere and I just loved it I tell you someone will remember us in the future and you could imagine up a whole scenario that has made her write those lines it's just fabulous I like this one as well but come dear companions for day is near and I thought that one fitted in really nicely with uh, ideas in this panel that spring is coming and that hope is on the way so I've, I'm going to put a little star next to this one and I'm going to put 
a little star next to this one. I'm just looking for lines or fragments that I might want to incorporate into my piece. So Mary Oliver I mentioned at the beginning and this poem has been really poignant for me in the last few weeks. Um, it's her poem The Uses of Sorrow and I love the fact that she starts with this bracketed line in my sleep I dreamed this poem and what I really like about that is the idea that sleep is where we often process things that have happened during the day or um, things that we've experienced and our brain just does peculiar things sometimes doesn't it and I just love the idea that Mary Oliver dreams in poetry <laughs> I, I wish I dreamt in poetry but if I dream it's often very weird so um, yeah this one I have pondered and pondered and pondered it's really short um, she says someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness it took me years to understand that this too was a gift and I just love how thoroughly she understands the idea of sadness and grief the fact that we only feel grief because we have loved someone and that is really poignant for me at the moment so I'm going to put a little star next to that one now similar to that is in Blackwater Woods and I'm not going to read it all go away and just gobble this poem up because it is so 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 beautiful she um, narrates going into a wood and observing what's happening in nature which is kind of what we've been doing in our panel for this month um, but I want to just read um, just the second half every year everything I have ever learned in my lifetime leads back to this the fires and the black river of loss whose other side is salvation whose meaning none of us will ever know to live in this world you must be able to do three things to love what is mortal to hold it against your bones knowing your own life depends on it and when the time comes to let it go to let it go yeah I think that is just beautiful so I'm going to have that and I'm going to have that one as well so I'm just picking out lines that are particularly beautiful sad <laughs> so let's do a more fun one so this is by Wendy Cope if you don't know her she is a genius her poems are totally accessible and often very very witty um, I just love it and I love how joyous this one is so this is based around uh, it's called the orange and this is based on the idea of simple moments in life bringing extreme joy and just the joy of being alive really so here we go Wendy Cope the orange I can't abbreviate this one it's so fabulous at lunchtime I brought a huge orange the size of it made us all laugh I peeled it and shared it with Robert and Dave. They got quarters and I had a half. And that orange, it made me so happy as ordinary things often do just lately. The shopping, a walk in the park. This is peace and contentment. It's new. The rest of the day was quite easy. I did all the jobs on my list and enjoyed them and had some time over. I love you. I'm glad I exist. So there's my line, I think. <laughs> I just think it's fabulous. The idea that having a giant orange and sharing it with some, some people that you know at lunchtime can make the rest of your day so much easier. And I love moments like that that just make you feel a little bit lighter. So last one, because we're doing snowdrops, let's have a little bit of William Wordsworth. So obviously most people know Wordsworth's Daffodil's poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud, that one. But he also, because he loved nature and nature was his sort of guiding light in life, he writes about lots of different aspects of nature and he wrote this lovely little poem about a snowdrop 
I want to say it's a sonnet. It is a sonnet. So it's almost like a love song to snowdrops. It's great. So, to a snowdrop. Lone flower, hemmed in with snows and white as they, but hardier far. Once more I see thee bend thy forehead, as if fearful to offend, like an unbidden guest. Though day by day storms sallying from the mountain tops waylay the rising sun, and on the plains descend, yet art thou welcome, welcome as a friend whose zeal outruns his promise. I love that. Blue eyed May shall soon behold this border thickly set with bright jonquils, daffodils, their odours lavishing on the soft west wind and his frolic peers. Nor will I then modest grace forget, chaste snowdrop, venturous harbinger of spring, and pensive monitor of fleeting years. I just love it. I love the. I think it captures the nature of snowdrop so brilliantly. We've got this uh, bend in the forehead, worried about offending people like a guest that's turned up without invitation, but then. Here we've got the snowdrop being brave, venturous harbinger of spring. Um, the bravery of being the first flower to lift its head above the snow in the early spring. I think it is just beautiful. So I think I like that line there. So what I've been doing is picking out lines that speak to me that stand out to me because we're going to incorporate some of the fragments from these poems into our piece so I hope you'll forgive me that indulgence sharing a bit of poetry with you um, in a sewing video how dare I um, and I hope you enjoy it now you might not want to incorporate poetry you might want to incorporate hymns or phrases that mean a lot to you you might want to put in fragments of conversation that has been meaningful to you you might want to put in people's names you might choose um, jokes um, you might want to select lines from novels or books that you value whatever you like but we're going to just put in fragments so what we don't want is a great long passage of text we want little snippets here and there the odd line and I've already prepared a couple just so that you can see where we're heading so we started off with um, Sappho and my favourite line was somebody will remember us and I've just stamped you can see I've got my little letter stamps here I've just stamped that line on to a little scrap of fabric I think this is a bit of the sheet that I've used in the background and we are going to place these on our background I've got a couple of lines from my Mary Oliver Home, so to love what is mortal that's in Blackwater Woods so we're going to have that one as well and we've got this too was a gift that's from the uses of sorrow couldn't remember the title of it then um, so that's going to feature somewhere as well this might not be where I place these I'm just um, putting the one and I've got a little one here that you probably can't see let me see if I can get my hand behind it because I've done it on chiffon ribbon so that it's really pale it says let it go that's from in Blackwater Woods as well and if I place it over something paler it's going to show up more and I could actually layer it over another phrase like that so that I can see them both might do that so I'm going to show you how I did it it's really simple nothing complicated if you don't have letter stamps you can pick them up really cheaply I think I picked these up at the range maybe for t I think they were two pounds not very expensive at all but you could hand write with a fabric pen you could stitch these words I just wanted some text Really. So let me show you how I've done it. I'm going to move this to one side for a moment and just bring back in 
my scraps of fabric so you need quite pale fabrics because the ink isn't going to show up otherwise so I've got some chiffon ribbon don't know if you can see that um, I've got my fragments that I was using last week to make my scrappy sunflower and then I've just got some bits of fabric little strips so this is a bit of the natural linen that we embroidered our snow drop on this is the peachy fabric that I think I want to use a bit of I've got a little strip of cotton that was left over from the weaving and I'm wondering whether that's going to be a bit dark but I do like this frayed edge here and I quite like to use it so let's have a go right let's do harbinger of spring so that looks like it should be in green so I've just got these little ink pads I was bought these as a gift I'm not a stamper particularly if you don't have ink pads you could use watercolour or acrylic paint just watered down a little bit you will find a way it will be okay <laughs> um, so there we go right so all I'm going to do is just dab my um, let's start on the left shall we because I don't know how much space this is going to take up so I'm just going to I've put them all out in alphabetical order so that I can keep track and I'm just printing letter by letter I'm not worrying about keeping it all straight I want it to look a little bit higgledy piggledy if you've got a typewriter you can put fabric through your typewriter or I do have the fabric that we adhered to the card when we printed off our animal in January you could do this on a printer and print them onto the rest of that fabric if you wanted to but I just happen to have the stamps I think the hardest thing about this is making you making sure you spell it right. <laughs> I'm now panicking that I haven't. Harbinger. I love it when I press a bit hard and I get the outline of the stamp pad as well. I just, I don't know. You wouldn't normally want that, but I quite like it. Harbinger. Where's my O? Here we go of and then I might have to go below S P So you can see I'm doing it quite quickly. I'm not thinking too much about lining everything up. I just want it printed and I'm not too worried about it being really super neat and regular. And I'm just going to snip that and tear it. So we've got Harbinger of Spring in a dark green. So that one can go on as well. Right, let's... Uh, let's have Lone Flower as well from Wordsworth, quite like that phrase um, and I've got a set of brown and what I'm going to do, because I'm not precious about these, <laughs> if you are precious about them then you need to blend them elsewhere, um, stamp onto some plastic and blend the inks but I, I'm not too worried about the mixing up so I'm going to take a bit of green and then go into my brown just so that I've got a little bit of variation in the colour
So I hope you've had a good week. It's been very quiet here. We've had a couple of really lovely sunny days and it's meant that I've been able to get out for some more walks. We went to Columba Park, which if you've never been, can be quite busy, but um, it's a National Trust property near Worksop in the UK and there is a beautiful lakeside walk. You can take your bike and cycle around. Um, but we just had a stroll around the lake on Sunday and at the moment they're doing chocolate and cherry scones in the cafe. <laughs> if that's your kind of thing, highly recommend. Um, so we've got lone flower there. So, pale fabrics, ink, acrylic paint, watercolour, whatever you've got. Some letter stamps, and if you don't have those, then um, you can hand write or stitch, entirely up to you. And we're going to start attaching these to our background now. So... We're just going to play around with placement. I do quite like those two together. So I'm going to keep that just over the top. Like that. Let's Have that like that. Right, I'm going to get my pins. Got to be careful because obviously I've got chiffon ribbon there and I don't want it to get damaged. So I'm just going to be really careful here. Just going to pin that in place. This one belongs near my snowdrops, I think. It's a balancing act here between not totally eradicating all the work we've done, but layering up. So I just want to shorten that a little bit. That one's going to go like that. Now, Again, you could have things on jaunty angles if you want to. I don't cope well with jaunty angles, <laughs> um, which I think I said last week. I, I just I don't understand. Um, I don't have a lot of stitching there, so let's try putting that one. You do you. So you could have them in all kinds of directions if you want to. You could have some going vertically if you want. Um, my brain won't allow it. I have no idea why. I'm definitely a straight line kind of person. Let's have this one up here. I'm glad I exist, can go over there. I feel like I need one down here. Maybe I need that one cutting across there. Like that. And then we've got Harbinger of Spring over here. So I'm just making sure I'm within my border. And 
everything is in place. Okay, so now we can stitch them down and in the spirit of fragments I'm going to take out any loose bits of thread that I've got in my box. So we're going to start with these and I've got got a little bit of my light green from last week that we used for the detail on the snowdrop so let's start with that one and get a little bit of that light green so we've got a bit there a bit there let's get a bit down here so I'm just going to running stitch so we're just going to add to that running stitch to stitch our words down so again I'm going to start off my lettering and I'm going to stitch a run up if you like and then stitch over this little patch with the with the words on. I've got a lot of layers that I'm going through here so just bear with it. So once you've got going you can start doing your rocking motion if you want to. And just catching, as long as you've caught the layer below it's fine. You don't have to go all the way through to the back. I hope you've enjoyed our February stitch along. We've focused quite a lot on snowdrops. I I don't make any apology for being a bit self indulgent. I just <laughs> I do I do love a snowdrop and our colour scheme just lent itself to a little snowdrop study and it's kind of one of my favourite colourways. I just love the colours on this one. Those muddy browns and that earthy green is just a joy to me. So I'm sorry if it's not your kind of thing but I'm kind of not really. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? So you you can do you it's it's absolutely fine so if this colorway doesn't work for you if snowdrops don't work for you then I, I hope you've heard me sort of giving alternatives all the way through these are only prompts these are starting points so we're trying to journal our year and reflect the world where we are so if you're coming into autumn, then that's the colour scheme you should go for. If you want to do a colour scheme that is about hope for you, then that's the colour scheme you should go for. And if snowdrops are not your thing, maybe they don't even grow in the part of the world where you are, then substitute with a different flower. So it's, it's the principle that is what we're going for. So I'm going to try a different shade of green now. Let's get this darker green. I'm trying to use up all these little bits of thread that are left over and I'm very aware that I've now got green fingers because I'm covered in ink. I'm sure you'll forgive me. So this is where we can play around and go in different directions. So this I don't mind. I just, if we're going to read words, they need to be readable, don't they? I 
I'm not going to do all of these. I'll show you how I do one and then I'll go off and stitch the rest and then come back and show you the finished piece. Just watching me running stitch through a million layers of fabric can't possibly be fun. <laughs> You don't have to do running stitch either if you want to do some of the other stitches that we've learnt during the month then go for it. Say so you might want to put some fly stitch lines that can be nice done in a kind of wavy way. It looks quite organic when you do it like that. So you can do whatever suits you and whatever suits your piece. The idea is to just enjoy the stitching and we've we've done quite a lot of fiddly stitch so this was quite like particular stitching. It's a new embroidery term for us all. Particular stitch. Um, our, this one you want it to be more slow stitch so you want a stitch that you don't have to think a lot about that you can just stitch mindfully and enjoy the process rather than worrying about whether your stitches are even or whether you're getting it right or whether you've mastered the technique I think just choose a stitch that comes naturally Running stitch is probably the easiest one that you can do. And I also quite like that it's echoing what we did in week one. Kind of like we've come full circle. Which is sort of what spring's all about, isn't it? Nature coming full circle, coming back to life. So you get the idea of what I'm doing. Just stitching that down. And I'm going to do that over all of them. And then we'll come back and add some finishing touches to this area here. We have our lettering now stitched down and I've used a variety of threads and I've done some vertical lines of stitch as well and I really like the way, if you were panicking before about it just looking plonked on, I really like the way that adding stitching has made it sort of seem more part of the piece, it's more sort of embedded into the piece because we've got this sort of ripply quilted feel that we've got everywhere else as well and you might notice that I've also cheated a little bit because I've started filling in some space over here I was thinking about how else we could explore fragments and I thought seed stitch is basically a stitch that is made up of fragments it's lots of individual straight stitches and I thought it'd be nice to fill in some of the space particularly around this side with some seed stitch and if you wanted to you could go back in any of the spaces so we've got a little space here space here might be nice to just add a little bit of seed stitch around here and I've just it is quite a time consuming stitch so this is something to do sitting in front of a movie or listening to an audio book or something I've been watching a YouTube video while I've been doing this um, so I've just filled in the space with seed stitch so I've got some variegated thread here it's this beigey anchor I wanted it to not take over I quite like this beige 
space here and I was tempted to stitch over this a little bit to blend it in but I quite like the space around it's all quite densely stitched I quite like the space around a little embroidered some uh, doing it again snowdrop so I wanted to leave that untouched and I think we're going to have some space created with this here as well so just to show you how to do it I've got a length of thread with a knot in the end and it's quite simply running stitch but rather than working in a line we're going to work in all kinds of different directions so I'm just bringing my needle up and taking it back down and then I want to bring it up again somewhere nearby and I want to work a stitch in a different direction and then sometimes I find it's helpful to start halfway along a stitch that you've just made it helps you constantly choose a different angle and then maybe work back into any space that you've left so this is one of the ways that I randomize my stitch so if you come up halfway along the stitch you just made and work into a space that you've left behind that tends to work quite well to help you be random because this stitch works best if it is completely haphazard and works in all sorts of different directions so there's a stitch I'm gonna go halfway along it and work back into a space that I've left halfway along it and that's got quite a lot of open space so let's do one here halfway along my stitch and I've got a space here that I can work back into this is one of the rare occasions I've just looked at my monitor <laughs> uh, this is one of the rare occasions where you can actually see what I'm stitching better than I can because the contrast on the screen is much better than the contrast in real life <laughs> so this one's working a treat to be filmed I wanted to use a neutral thread because I don't want it to I like that beigey wall background and I didn't want to lose it and there's quite a lot of green already on the piece so I wanted some of those browns to come in just creating that muddy February feel so another way that you can randomise it I'm trying not to catch down any of these frayed edges by the way so I'm just kind of trying to work underneath them where I can so if you didn't know there is a Facebook group for Winging It 24 I will put a link in the description below you have to request membership it's a private group so you have to request membership and all you have to do is agree to the group rules and there's nothing controversial there it's just things like only positive posts so we're not gonna um, be self-effacing in our posts we're not gonna compare ourselves to one another because we're all just creating our unique pieces of stitch and there's no judgment we're all at different stages we've all got different levels of skill we've all got different resources available and so we're just gonna encourage one another so it's a really supportive group if you've never posted anything on social media before it's a really safe place to post you you will be overwhelmed by everybody's warmth and generosity I can assure you so 
don't let me down now folks <laughs> So yeah, you can join that. If you want to post on Instagram, if Facebook isn't for you, it's not for me, I have to say. I'm doing it because I know a lot of you do use Facebook more than you use Instagram. But I find Facebook a bit of a mystery, to be honest. But if you want to post on Instagram, just use hashtag FSH winging it 24 and... If you tag me in, I'll be guaranteed to see your post. So do check the hashtag every now and again. You can actually follow the hashtag and that means that you will get any new posts to your feed. But yeah, you can post on Instagram if you like as well. And I can't tell you how much I enjoy seeing your interpretations of the prompts and the panels that we're doing it's just such a joy to see everybody's different versions loving all the summer into autumn pieces that are coming from the southern hemisphere blows my mind a little bit that there are people all around the world <laughs> doing this project i find it mind-blowing i've just been amazed that people are interested in anything that I do really it's it's just lovely um, right so I just want to say what I'm doing here so I'm now going to just spread out my stitches and have them sort of fade out so I'm leaving a little bit of a bigger gap between the stitches that I'm doing and I want to make it look like they're kind of fading at this point as we're getting into the busier part of the panel so there's our panel for February I if it needs some buttons do we think it needs some buttons? I think it does hang on a second right <laughs> as if by magic some buttons have appeared so I've got a shell button here that's this sort of oyster grey that is from our colour scheme and then this is a button that came out of my grandma's button box and there's quite a lot to do with memory and sort of remembered fragments and I really like it and I like the fact that it's got two different directions maybe I'm going to put it that way around so we've got that bronzy bit in the middle and then this one I just love just a carved wooden button um, and that gives us our muddy brown so I wonder whether we need it I think we'll have to put it that way around because oh, I quite like that just worry that it's 442 but that, it's okay right that's where we're going to put it and I'm just going to put little pins just to mark where I want them right let's get some little thread fragments so this is just leftover thread that we're gonna use to finish off let's make a little tie on this one so I'm gonna come in from the front And then come up from the back and I'm going to tie it so that we've got some texture so a little fragment of thread like that, cut that off, couldn't find my pin then, 
Right, so this one we're going to tie across the middle. one going that way I don't think we need another one actually and then last one let's do this in the opposite direction I love these I have woven through the holes of these before waving a bit of thread and it, it does look really nice. I love a button with a cutaway. <laughs> there we go. Let's trim that off. And there we have it. Now, here's where the magic occurs. I'm bringing my aperture that we cut last month and that will give us a bit more of a sense of our finished piece. So if I just nudge it around just to get our section. So that's what our piece is going to look like. Now, last month we put our border around. So I am going to do something very similar with our February panel and I will do that and then I will put a community post on showing you the finished piece with border. So yeah, I will put a border on that and I will post the absolutely finished piece once that border's on. So that's it for February. Hope you've enjoyed that. Look out for a community post with the finished piece and I will be back on Sunday with our first March video. So have a great week stitching the rest of your February panel and I will see you very soon. Have a great week. See ya. Bye.